Today I'm starting a new project, a large-scale, long-term, big, beautiful project. It's one that I've been dreaming about for as long as I can remember, and planning for the last five years. It's a recreation of my all-time favorite movie costume. But first, let's take a trip back. Before I started this channel, I did not make my own clothing. Most of my sewing was costuming. I would tackle big projects, working on them at whatever pace I had time for. Rarely did I complete a project in less than a month. When I decided to start a channel, I knew that this was going to have to change. In order to make consistent videos, I needed shorter projects that I could finish in a week or less. I was also interested in making more practical daily wear clothing, so for a while I abandoned costuming. Then, when the trend of history bounding exploded in the historical costuming communities, I thought I had an answer. I thought it was a way for me to get back into costuming, sort of, but still make practical, wearable clothing, sort of. Notice those two sort ofs. They're kind of a problem. <laughs> Let me give you an example of why this didn't work. This is one of my 18th century inspired dresses. It's sort of historical, but nowhere near accurate enough to wear to a reenactment or a ball. It's also sort of a light summery dress, but it still requires the use of a corset to wear, which I now know I'm just not going to do on an average summer day. Sometimes in life, I think a half measure just isn't even worth taking. It's all or nothing. Make the costume you love or wait on it. I believe that time spent learning is never wasted, but my goal was to transition to a home sewn wardrobe, and in that regard, I did set myself back quite a bit. I could have spent my time making a few simple summer day dresses for my regular wardrobe and an actual 18th century gown to wear to events. So with this fresh revelation, I've decided to take my channel in a new direction. I still want to make basic practical clothing. Those projects will be helpful to many people out there, and I need that clothing to replenish my wardrobe. But I also need to keep learning and trying new, challenging projects that will grow my skills. So today I'm starting a big costuming project. I'll be breaking it down into stages, making videos about each stage and alternating between them and my regular clothing tutorials. And the costume I'll be making is... The Just Breathe Gown from Ever After. This project would not be possible without the research done long ago by the woman who runs EverAfterCostumes.com. She also created PadawansGuide.com and CostumersGuide.com. I believe her name is Maggie, but I'm not sure. I can no longer find her page on Instagram, and she doesn't appear to have much social media presence anymore. I hope she sees these videos someday, and if she does, thank you so much for your work and for recording your research. There are still people out here using it and appreciating it. For the first essential stage of this project, I must make a corset. It will provide the foundation and shape of the dress, and it will also double as a harness for the wings. The original dress was separate from the corset, but I'll be constructing my dress directly onto the corset. I just think it'll be stronger and more secure that way. Everaftercostumes.com has an image of the actual corset used. There is only the one picture, and it's rather grainy, but it still gives us invaluable insight. Jane Law, the woman who actually made the original breathe dress, took this photo way back in 1998 of the corset lying on the floor of Drew Barrymore's trailer. She also provided these details. She says, I wanted the inner corset to be as light as a feather at the front, but like scaffolding at the back. Although the wings were very light, as wings go, they were still heavy enough to be in danger of pulling the bodice away from her back at the top, hence the rigidity. Looking at the photo, the corset appears to be made from some sort of lightweight mesh. It's fairly transparent. There are reinforcements around the underbust and rib cage, and you can see the boning channels and the waist tape. You can see that the back of the corset is made from something denser. The straps are set at an unusual angle, sloping away widely instead of sitting up vertically. This is because the straps are not designed to hold the corset up, like stays or other corset straps might. Instead, they were designed to hold the back in close to the body and keep the wings from pulling it away. They are angled down like that because the neckline of the dress slopes off the shoulders. For my reconstruction, I will have to deviate from the photo some. I don't know exactly what this mesh is, so I'll be sticking with a basic cotton corset cotille. Mine might not end up as light as a feather, but I'd rather make it too strong than risk making it too weak, especially since I do plan to build the dress onto the corset, because that means there won't be a possibility of swapping out the corset later. For the pattern, I'm starting out with one that's been in my stash for as long as I can remember. I've made it several times before, and it's a good basic staple for a modern silhouette. 
However, the last time I tried making it from corset cotille was before I understood that I was short-waisted. The resulting corset presses all wrong on my hips and ribs, and the only time I wore it to an event, my back was sore for days after. Corsets are great, if they fit. So shortening the waist of my pattern is the first thing I'm going to alter. I'm tracing them out onto fresh paper, then adding two lines one inch apart on the waistline. I folded these lines to meet, and there we have it, the shortened waist. You do need to fudge in between the lines where they become jagged. I'm also going to adjust the neckline just a tiny bit, since I know that it's going to be much more rounded later. I traced out the other pattern similarly, and then I tried to alter the back piece. It needs to slope wider at the top, sort of like an 18th century pattern. But I realized that would be easier to do later, after I raised the back neckline. The big change I want to make is to alter the bust. The curve is made through a single seam at the center. It's a design that works well enough for A and B cups, but even with a C cup, I find it difficult to curve without warping. So I attempted to split these two pattern pieces into three pattern pieces. I definitely fumbled my way through it, but it did end up turning out pretty decent, so I'll show you how it went. On the center front panel, I freehanded a curve that would chop off about a third of the piece. I split them apart and then did the same on the side front piece. I cut off the seam allowances from these two resulting slivers, and then I did something sort of weird to make the opposite curves into one piece. I lined up the straight lower portions of the two pieces and traced around their base. Then I started working up the pieces about an inch at a time, adjusting them as I went to line up that segment of the curve. The resulting shape wasn't too bad, but it definitely looked a bit wonky. I used a ruler to find where I thought the straight grain should roughly sit, and then adjusted the piece to fit along that line. Basically, I eyeballed it, and whatever I moved over on one side, I moved over the other side to match. I'm really just trying to get the gist of the piece. Refining it is what mock-ups are for. I added seam allowance to the new piece, cut it out, and then added seam allowances to the remains of the original pieces where I had chopped them off. Now we have our base corset, only altered for fit, and it's time to make a mock-up. There's a trick I love to use when patterning corsets. I've mentioned it before, but if you're new here and haven't seen many of my previous videos, this one is definitely worth repeating. I sew two panels into the back edge, joined by a zipper. I make this zippered panel about 2 inches wide, because a 2 inch lacing gap is ideal in a corset. The first mock-up I made was alright, but definitely too loose. However, that's good for a corset mock-up. You want it a little bit loose to start so that you can pinch it in and refine the fit to your specific curves and body shape. That is exactly what I did. I took in the side seam substantially, and I tightened the angle between the waist and hips. I also need to do a bit more work on those bust panels. Basically, I needed to exaggerate the curve more. Instead of a gentle slope, I tightened the seams beneath the bust and then sharply sloped them out. Trying it on again, there was a huge improvement in the fit already. I felt like the front waist could still be tighter, but it seemed to be getting a bit constricting in the bust. So I took that straight seam at the side of the bust and angled out a new line, which would bring it in at the waist but loosen it just a little bit at the bust. Trying it on again, it definitely seemed better, though it's hard to tell exactly because there's no boning. But I decided that the fit was good enough, at least for now as a starting place, and I should go ahead and start working on that neckline. 
First, I marked the waistline of the corset by pulling a tape measure tight around my waist so that it settled into the natural dip, and then tracing the line that formed just beneath the tape. It will be important to trace this waistline to my pattern pieces so that I can more easily cut my fabric on the straight grain, place the waist tape, and alter the pattern in the future. Ooh, look at that! Shapely! To start building the corset out, I'm just going to piece scraps onto it and draw roughly the shape I think it needs to have. I started with the back because it seemed easier. It fit pretty well, but it did gape away from my shoulder, which meant that I needed to pinch it in and add a dart. Then I pieced onto the front of the corset. I'm not sure if that was actually easier to do it while wearing the thing, but it worked. I very, very roughly traced out the shape of the neckline, and then took it off and refined that line. I trimmed away the excess, and then sewed over that whole area a few hundred times to tack the pieces down. I measured a line across the top edge of that neckline. I'm thinking I'll make that part of the strap. There is something sort of like it happening on the original. Then I cut a sloping wedge out of the back to give it that curve that it needs to fit over my shoulder blade. I cut out a straight, one-inch strip and pinned that loosely across the armhole. It worked pretty well, but it definitely wasn't right yet. It was mostly the back that was angled wrong, and I realized that I needed to build up that back edge more. So, another round of scrap fabric and tweaking, and it was starting to take shape. Just one thing, I realized that I'd forgotten to move over that seam to widen the back panel. I freehanded it, but I had already built that dart into the previous seam. I decided that the best thing to do was ignore the dart and then try to replicate it later. By now, I felt like I was at the limit of how far I could go with this mock-up, so I decided to turn it into the next pattern. I played around with the back panel first, sketching out a possible layout for the boning. Then I cut along all of the adjusted seams and separated the pieces. Okay, here are the changes that I made. On this seam and this seam, I pulled it in just a little bit to make up for the bubble that was here that was supposed to be kind of a dart princess seam, you know, easement. Um, and then over here, I moved this seam over by a quarter of an inch, and then I moved it over by a quarter of an inch on this piece, and that was to just move the entire seam a little bit further away from the bust. And then down here, I moved the end of this seam over by a quarter of an inch, and then the end of this seam over by a matching quarter of an inch, because this one was super narrow compared to this one, and now they're just a little bit more even. So, I'm gonna cut these out, and I have my pattern. Okay, everything is cut out, and here is the current state of my floor. <laughs> I think I'm going to call it quits for the night. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Just got in from feeding the chickens. It is about 6.20, and I'm excited to get started, so I'm basically just going to get started. 
I went to my parents' house last night and I picked this up from my dad's shop. It's basically the exact same thing as this, but like 20 times better. <laughs> This one works fine for the little chintzy aluminum um, eyelets from Joann's, but I have some steel corset eyelets that it just was not going to work with. This just squishes them like butter. For the actual construction, these five pieces are going to be super easy. They're going to be pretty standard Victorian corset structuring. I'm just going to sew them together and then cover the seams with a bone casing. So yeah, this will all be easy. Oh, this is going to be complicated. I have about 80% of a plan for this, but then I'm just gonna have to kind of figure it out as I go, and then this will be last. Look at that little window peeker. Okay, one mistake I just realized I made is that when I separated the strap from the top of the neckline in the front and back, I forgot to add seam allowance onto here. However, I did add a half inch of seam allowance onto here, so what I think I'll do is just stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Won't be perfect, but eh, basically it worked. I cut a bunch of one inch wide strips for the boning channels. But for the center front, I'm doing a double channel, so I cut one strip at an inch and a half wide. I ironed all of the edges in by a quarter inch, but then on that extra wide channel, I also folded it in half and ironed it. This is really just to give me a nice line to follow when I sew this channel to the corset. To do this, I first trimmed down the seams to right about a quarter of an inch. I used that fold line as a guide and stitched down the very center seam of the corset. Then I sewed along the edges of the other two sides. And the rest were pretty much the same, though a bit challenging on the more curvy segments. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I did forget to stitch in the waist tape as I was going. I think that's traditionally the best way to do that. So I'll just have to go back and stitch it kind of on top of the channels. Uh, that's a little frustrating. That just would have, that was the plan, but I just forgot to do it. Um, all right, so next I need to start working on the back and that will definitely be the complicated part. Well, I changed my mind and it was a little time consuming to go back and seam rip all of these little bits mostly because I had reduced my stitch size very tiny, um, but I think it was worth doing because it's just a much cleaner way to have this set in rather than trying to stitch it on top. Um, it'll just make the fit a lot better. Uh, and I used this random piece just because it happened to be the perfect measurement. Um, there's nothing special about it. And then the end will get stitched up into the final back panel. And so yeah, I just need to go and restitch all of these little bits that I had to seam rip out and then we can start the back. Ah yes, much better. Much, much better. Okay, so for the back piece, I have been developing a plan in my head as I've been working on all the seam roughing. And I think the first thing I need to do is go and make all of these markings on just the two outer pieces. Uh, because the order in which I sew these channels is going to be very important if it's all going to fit together like it's supposed to.
Okay. This back was very complicated, and I had to do a lot of seam ripping along the way because I couldn't even keep the order straight myself. But first, the outer corset cotil and the linen canvas need to be pinned together. If I'd had shiftier fabric, I would have basted them, but it didn't seem necessary. Then I have to make the slit for the wing pocket. I cut a piece of scrap fabric and drew a line to match the slit on the panel. I used pins to line those two slits up, and now it needs sewn. I shortened the stitch length on my machine and then sewed a box around the slit. It was shaped a bit funky because the slit isn't exactly level. It's sort of at an angle, so the box I sewed was more of a parallelogram than a rectangle. In the end, the stitching should stay inside of the three boning channels surrounding the piece. Now I need to open it up. I used a buttonhole opener to cut a slit down the center, then my scissors to cut to the corners. I turned it right side out and pinned down the sides, and look at it. Nice, neat opening, really strong too. I top stitched around the box, tacking those edges down. Then I trimmed the top of that scrap fabric down to match the neckline. I marked on the back about where the edges should cross over with the boning channels, then cut just outside of that. And there will be three bones going through these pieces, and they intersect, so I need to make sure they don't cut each other off. I took my machine on a route akin to taking your dog for a walk in a neighborhood full of cul-de-sacs. It was kind of fun. These bones will go in front of the other bones, which is why they are sewn between these two pieces. Look at that sturdy little wing slit. Now I need to sew this piece to the body of the corset. Then on the other side, I'm going to place that cotille liner piece. Stitch that same seam again, and when I flip them to the right side, the seam will be encased between them. Now comes all of the other channels. I first set my machine to a long stitch and sewed down the fold line. This is a basting stitch to hold everything together, and a marking stitch for later on. Then, because I'm planning on sewing a lining into this corset at the very end of the project, after the dress is completely attached, I decided to serge the back edge. I was a tiny bit short on fabric for the underside, so this will save me a little. Then I folded the back edge along my basting stitch and sewed the next three channels. A quarter inch at the back for a boning channel, a half inch past that for the row of eyelets, and another quarter inch channel at the side of the wing pocket. Notice that I'm lifting the foot and skipping stitches over the horizontal channels wherever they intersect. Then I can start the boning channel on the other side of the wing pocket. But notice that when I get to the waist, I'm turning and sewing a little horizontal seam. This is the base of the wing pocket. Reverse course, then straighten out again and continue down the side seam of the back panel. Then I can sew the other side of that channel down to the waist point, then turn and start sewing the three little angled channels. Okay. <laughs> That was a lot. Sorry, I'm sure that that was pretty hard to follow. If you got lost, don't sweat it. This was a very unusual boning pattern that you will probably never have to follow, unless you decide to make a corset wing harness for your own purposes. But then I was finished except for seam ripping out that basting stitch along the fold line. Okay, moving right along, I'm down to a bunch of boning <laughs> and then binding the armhole binding the lower edge, and then the whole strap situation, which will also bind the back and front necklines, and then eyelets. So, one thing at a time, all right? Let's do boning. So I have a variety of boning, but not a ton of each. This is some basic spring steel. I have, I don't know, maybe two and a half yards, maybe three. I have this bundle of spiral steel boning. I'm not sure how many yards is on here. I have a bunch of different plastic bone, like kind of scraps. I'm gonna use up some of these for the shorter pieces. I have a whole lot more plastic in there. <sighs> okay, so I did have enough of everything that I needed. So the center front has spring steel. One, two, three, four. These ones all have spiral steel. Then at the side we have plastic, spring steel on either side of the wing pocket uh, plastic in between, and then plastic on these three. Um, it was kind of a nightmare because, well, one, all of that metal is hard to cut and I don't have the best tools to do it with. Um, but then two, the little end caps 
these little things wouldn't stay on. They kept getting stuck in the channels. I had to uh, restitch and then seam rip a bunch of the channels because they were just barely not going to fit. This one, the cap got stuck in it and I literally could not get it out. I had to just cut a hole into it. So, <sighs> oh, oh, and it's all dirty now. There's like all of these little spots because I kept having to use these dirty tools to try and force and jam the boning inside. Okay, I'm done complaining. All right, I'm tired. I'm gonna take a bit of a break. I still think I can finish it tonight. It's like not even five o'clock yet. Okay, I think I'm gonna work on the underarms next, but I'm gonna take a break first. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't actually end up finishing yesterday. I got the boning done and then I went to take a break and while I was eating dinner, my friend Amelia called, who I haven't talked to in ages. So we spent three hours catching up, which was really good. What is that turkey doing over there? Uh -huh. So I'm basically down to the, um, the binding the straps and the eyelets. The eyelets will be super quick and easy. The straps, I've never done something like this before, but I have a plan, so it should be pretty quick and easy. The binding, same thing basically. Yeah, I'm just gonna get to work. <laughs> For the binding, I decided to use a linen tape, mostly because it would have a much thinner profile than a double folded fabric tape would. I thought I could sew both sides in one go. Other people can, but that never seems to work for me. This was no exception, and I had to flip it over and sew the seam again on the back side to catch the gaping underside of the tape. Then I ironed it to flatten it some. At this point, I was starting to get a bit messier, but the thing is, once I realized that I was going to be sewing a lining inside the dress, that meant 0% of the corset was going to end up showing, inside or outside the dress. But yeah, I did basically the same thing with the bottom edge of the corset, except that I decided to just sew it one side at a time. Okay, the straps. I originally cut two layers of the cotil, but I decided that that was going to be way too thick. So I recut the lining from a light cotton lawn. I pinned the center fronts together and sewed them, and then ironed them open. Starting at the center front, I pinned the strap to the neckline. Then I stitched it with a quarter inch seam. Then I repeated that process with the back neckline on either side. I kept that strap folded down, and then I pinned the lining onto the back side. Stitched it across the whole strap, including over the shoulders, and oops, made a mistake. Fixed that, and here we are. I folded the straps up and pinned around the neckline, top stitched that edge, then I took it to the ironing board and folded the upper edges and pinned them together. This was bulky and messy, and I'm zipping through the segment because, spoiler alert, I'm going to have to do some backtracking later. But this is what it looked like when I finished. Not terrible, but not terribly confidence-inspiring either. And I was down to the eyelets. Usually I use the chintzy aluminum eyelets from Joann's. Those are perfectly acceptable for a low-budget project or a costume that you'll only wear once. But the terrible thing about them is the serrated edge in the back. It splits whenever you crush the eyelet, and those little edges grab and shred whatever you lace through them. So for this project, I'm switching to steel corsetry eyelets. However, there was a problem. The eyelets need to go through four layers of cotil and two layers of canvas. Usually I use an awl to spread a hole large enough to fit the eyelets through, but that was basically impossible. I have a hole punch that I've used before, but I couldn't fit the edge through it. I tried my leather hole punch, but it just wasn't strong enough to punch through. So I must again ask my dad for help. It is nice having a backup workshop with heavy duty tools.
Okay, first look, it is not as bad as I expected, but not perfect. The fit is actually pretty good, which is good because that would be the hardest part to do anything about. This is the worst, which is good because that's the easiest part to change. Um, it does not want to lie smoothly against my shoulders. The bones do hit my shoulder blade kind of awkwardly, like right about here. I can try and bend the bones like I did with the, the bones at the hip. That really helped improve the fit in that portion. It really comes down to the straps. This is not quite right, but that's a good thing because this was the last thing I sewed on, so it'll be the easiest possible thing to seam rip off and try something else. I just need to figure out what exactly that is. <laughs> I decided to go ahead and seam rip out the armhole too. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't great, and since I had it accessible and opened up again anyways, I figured I might as well just get rid of it. I think I'm just going to serge this edge, and then I'm going to go ahead and serge all of these edges too, just to keep them from fraying while I figure out what I'm going to do next, and start working with my strap pattern piece again. Okay, here's how I altered the neckline pattern. It was too tight over the shoulders, so it seemed like the lower edge needed to expand a little. And it was too loose and gaping around the neckline, so maybe those edges needed to contract a little. And I also wanted to add a bit to the back so that it would meet in the center instead of stopping where the corset does. So I first removed the seam allowances. Then, to contour it, I cut clips into the piece, spaced about an inch apart. I cut them from the bottom up over the shoulder, but then from the top down at the necklines. Then I placed it on new paper and started shifting the clips around. I spread each one out a tiny bit over the shoulder, but then overlapped them a bit over the neckline in the front and back. I traced it as I went, and in the end I had a new piece, and you can see that it's much more rounded than the original was. I forgot to add seam allowances before cutting the pattern out, so I just traced it onto the cotille and eyeballed the allowances. I'm not going to cut a lining this time. I think that was one source of unnecessary bulk in the first version. But I pinned the two halves together and sewed them up the center front, and then serged the top and bottom edge. I also folded and hemmed the two little ends. These I will probably let out and adjust when I get closer to finishing the whole gown. Next I'm going to repin it to the neckline of the corset, starting from the center front again. However, this time I'm not going to fold it right sides together. I'm just lining them up straight, feeling for the overlap of the two surged edges and pinning through them. It looks like this, and you can see where the ends stretch past the edge of the corset. And you can also see where I bent the spring steel to fit better over my shoulder blades. So this looks a lot smoother and a lot less bulky, and I think that contouring really helped to kind of angle it in better. Now in the back, I did something a little funky. I stopped right at this edge because I'm thinking that when I stitch the dress onto the corset, I'm going to stop about here and then let the remaining several inches hang free. And then those I will make a separate closure for. So what I'm thinking I'll do up here is I will be stitching the neckline of the dress to the corset right up to this edge, but this hanging free, I will basically make the dress neckline closure up here, but then that way it can be pulled away a little bit so that I can work with the wings and manipulate the lace-up section. So I'll just like close these with a safety pin for now, but that's, that's the idea right there. Okay, I think that did the trick. All right, so one, this is laying so much smoother now. This did not need to be two layers. I way overcomplicated it. Just a single strip of fabric surged on both sides. The contouring really helped. So the edge of the strap sits a lot closer to my chest now. It's not gaping and rippling as much. This, the sleeves, they have more room in the space that they should have it and less room in the space where they shouldn't have it. So that's good. I bent the bones in the back to kind of try and cup it over my shoulder blade and it's much better now. I think I could stand to bend it even a little bit more, a little bit lower, but yes, that definitely improved it. Um, and then the only other thing that I think it still needs is some padding. That just seems to be something inherent with these uh, more curvy corsets is that they just don't quite have as much support to keep things where you want them to be. So if I add some padding, that will help to keep everything situated where I want it. 
it will also be an aesthetic improvement, but it's mostly for the padding. So yeah, I'm actually happy. I was really discouraged about an hour ago, but it's looking like it's gonna work. Okay, so about bust cups. <laughs> oh my god. That is a little bit more than I actually need. <laughs> but I might keep them. <laughs> they look pretty good. <laughs> To sew in the pads, I situated them where they looked and felt best, and then I pinned through the corset to temporarily secure them. When I took it off, you can see that they were pretty uneven, but that's okay. I was just trying to figure out approximately where they should go. Now I can fiddle with them and adjust them and even them up and pin them where I want them sewn. I stitched around each with a large whip stitch, and the foundation of my Just Breathe dress is complete. Well, here it is, the Breathe Corset. Stage one done, and it turned out pretty good. The real test is whether or not I'm happy enough with the fit and the shaping to proceed confidently to the next stage. On a project like this, starting with a good, comfortable, well-fitting, smooth corset is essential. It's the foundation. If you build over a poorly fitting corset, it's never going to do the dress justice. I was prepared to completely start over if necessary, but luckily, I don't have to. I also want to keep track of the running costs of this project. I've always been afraid to do that with big projects, but we'll probably both find it informative. So for this corset, I used almost a whole yard of corset cotil, which I purchased from Cali Cat Creations on Etsy. It was $16 a yard, but with taxes and shipping, it totaled $26.27. Everything else I already had in my stash for at least a couple of years, so I won't count it. But if you were attempting a similar corset, and if you don't have quite as extensive of a stash, you might need to account for those costs as well. The next stage will be making a petticoat and the silk satin underskirt. If you'd like to see the progression of this project, feel free to subscribe. If you're more interested in practical projects, don't worry, we'll be doing more of that too. But I'm off to video edit, so I'll see you next time.